What's going on guys, Coach Matt and you go pro baseball. I'm here again with Craig Stem, pro pitcher. And this video, we're talking about how to long toss the right way. We've got some really cool stuff that we were just talking off camera that I'm really excited for you guys to hear. But before we get into it, I wanna talk about something he's got going on. He makes these really cool watch straps. Whether you got an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, whatever it is, he makes them out of baseballs, baseball gloves, really cool stuff. Check them out in the description at the link below. Now, let's get into it. You do a few things unique that I've never seen or heard uh, in Long Toss. It's helped you. Let's talk about it. Right. What do you do? Well, the main thing I do in Long Toss, I just throw the ball as far as I can. But that's not the part you're talking about that's unique, right? The part that's unique, I basically try to get you see we have the camera set up. Here's home plate, we're down the third base line, right? If there's nobody on a field and you're playing catch with somebody, don't go to the outfield. Use the lines on the field to your advantage. I like to have two lines. So we don't have the line painted here, but you can see it vaguely, the third base line. But what we're really gonna use is this cut of grass right here. So we saw an earlier video and I talked about how to use the front side and um, where you want your glove to go in relation to where you release the ball, right? So if you release the ball, I'm gonna to try to get this ball in my release point lined up over this cut of grass. It's a straight line, right? My partner would be down that way if I'm long tossing with him. And basically, I'm gonna to try to get into a position where when my front foot hits the ground, my release point is directly over this cut of grass. That is my release point line. Now from there, I want to get my front side and my front foot over this line. And that's gonna help me create my rotational velocity in the most efficient way. I'm gonna get my foot out here. I'm gonna get my glove out here and I'm gonna rotate them and I'm gonna land to where I'm releasing the ball directly over that cut. And that's gonna help me throw the ball as far as I possibly can. So all I'm gonna do is come into my throw like this, do a nice step behind get my foot over here, get my glove over here, rotate and throw this thing. And one of the reasons I love long toss is we're competitive, man. And I can sit here, I used to always just throw 200 feet and just try to throw the ball in a straight line. And I mean, I think that that works in a way, but it, it, it was less satisfying to me because I don't really know how hard I'm throwing that ball. When you long toss, and you're on a football field or you're on a baseball field and you know how far you're throwing the ball, I mean, you start to find new ways to throw the ball further and you find your limits and you make them go further. And that, that's, that's what I love the most about it. Why, let me ask you this, why, do you, why are you doing long toss? Like, is this more for velocity development? Is this to clean up your delivery? Is this to recover? Like, what is the main purpose for you for using long toss? Right, of course the obvious ones are uh, arm strength and arm conditioning. It helps a ton. There's, there's not really a great replacement to, to help you build arm strength and conditioning. My favorite benefit of long toss, it amplifies the flaws in your delivery. If you have a leak, long toss is gonna call it out big time, big time. If you over rotate your front side on the mound, you might miss by six inches to, to eight inches. I don't know. If my front side leaks and I'm long tossing to my partner who's 300 feet away, I'm throwing this ball on the interstate over there. Like I'm, I'm gonna miss so bad. So you end up staying in better positions just because you know that that's what you have to do to get the ball to your partner. And if you can video it, the issues become glaring if you're doing something wrong. Your body, as, as humans, our body tries to accomplish the task that we give it. So if, we're, if we've are if we got someone that's so far away, we're gonna try to do whatever we can to try to get that ball to them naturally or instinctively. Our body does that. Also, same thing, if we're trying to be straighter, right? right you know, we're, we're gonna try to stay more on that line. So it's a good way. Me personally, I wasn't a huge long toss guy. I would go 150, 180, right. and I was staying with the sinker and try to throw it as hard as I could. Um, but I think, you know, for everyone, and that's probably something that's not talked about so much in, in baseball is like, you kind of got to develop your own philosophy. Like you weren't always, excuse me, you weren't always the same. You didn't always do the same thing right. your whole career. You kind of figured it out as you went along what worked for you uh, along the way. So I think that's kind of something important to note as a, as a pitcher. Let me ask you this though about your long tossing. 
how often would you do it? Like, were you doing it every single day, every other day, or right. did it did it vary? How, how did that work? Yeah, so my routine, basically, I would max long toss once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Now, anytime I go throw, I throw as hard as I can all the time. Even if I'm only throwing by myself into a net in a facility because my catch partner didn't want to throw that day, I'm throwing the ball as hard as I can. You want to throw hard? You got to train to throw hard. You want to throw hard and throw strikes? You have to train to throw hard strikes. You have to try to throw the ball right in the middle as hard as you can. Steph Curry did not get good at shooting threes by practicing layups, right? He just shot a whole bunch of three-pointers, right? That's the way it goes. So long toss, obviously you're throwing the ball as hard as you can. It's very taxing on not only your arm, but you're getting all of your legs inside, you're getting this front side in, you're working your core. Like It's like John said, your body is smart. It will find a way to accomplish the task, right? You throw one ball that goes as far as you wanted it to go, and it was further than the one you threw before it, your body's gonna kinda remember what positions you got in to achieve that, and it's gonna repeat it. If you do that enough times, and you've now perfected your delivery. I've got a question. I don't know if I've ever talked about this or not. I'm not sure. But are you a guy who likes to lift or work out before you throw or throw before you lift and work out? Because I know that some guys right. ha have different, different opinions on that. I, I do all of my throwing first in a day. And, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? My catch partner doesn't wanna throw until 3 p.m. I'm probably gonna get up in the morning and lift that day. That's not my ideal situation. In my perfect world, I get my throwing in and then I go lift. Um, and the reason, the reason that I like that is uh, it helps me, like throwing can really kinda help me feel the areas that I might need to focus on that day, if that makes sense. I just really, I just really don't want to go into my throwing session already fatigued, right? That's the most important part of my day for me. And, you know, long toss is amplifying those, those inconsistencies or those leaks. So if you're fatigued, you're going to have more of that. You're going to make your job harder and you're just working on being more inconsistent. If you're trying to be more consistent, you don't want to be working on more inconsistent, right? Right. So that makes sense to me. I was the same way. More, Always wanted to get my throwing. Yeah, you're more likely for your arm to get low or and not get into the right positions, which ends up causing more soreness. And if you do it long enough, you will eventually injure yourself. So. Is there anything that you do specifically in long toss that you want to touch on that maybe you like taking out the lower body or anything like that? Right. No, I I, I focus a ton on my lower half. But uh, I am just a big proponent of what my arm is doing. So when I long toss, you've heard me discuss, I, when I pitch, I really try to get my elbow popped up and in front so that I could come through with flexion and then snap out front. When I long toss, this is the best time to work for that. It's incredibly difficult to achieve what I'm talking about without years of training on the mound because it's so tough to train yourself to delay this layback because everybody's been taught to lay it back back here and then come through and throw. But if we're gonna come through with flexion on the mound, then that's really difficult to achieve. But in long toss, it's way easier because our release point is so much higher, right? We're gonna throw the ball up in the air, so my release point ends up being up here. So now all of a sudden, the flexion is heading up and I release like that. Go out and try that. Try to come through with flexion and feel that snap out front and you'll see the ball just take off. You'll backspin it and it will just ride. And that's what I like to feel, for sure. You know, now that you say that too, there's, there's a misconception in pitching, pitching off the mountain and stuff. You always hear coaches say, reach out front, get out here on your release point. Realistically, if you look at video, that's, this is not where the release is happening. The release is happening up here, up in line with your, your back, your butt, and all the way down to your heel. If, you, if you've created enough energy down that mound correctly, or even in, in long toss, you, you, know, you should be right on that line this way. The only difference with long toss is you're releasing it more right. up. Wrist back a little bit, I guess, a little bit more. So yeah. very cool stuff, very cool stuff. So if you guys are you know, 
proponent of uh, if you if you guys like long tossing, maybe this is uh, this will some good tips to steal. Also, think about building your what works for you, building your own philosophy in pitching, right? Craig and I have all, we learned today that we are very, very, sim very similar in a lot of the pitching stuff that we talk about. Still but some differences too. Yeah. Did, we and, also, and, and I don't, and, and I think they work I, either way. Right. <laughs> either way. Right. And there's guys that are way different than us. Yeah. So understand what type of pitcher you are, what your philosophy is, and build that philosophy over time and what works for you. Listen to all the coaches. Guess what? You're going to probably have 100 coaches in your career if you play as long as we did. And guess what? A lot of them are going to tell you different stuff. It's your job to listen to it, try it, feel it, take what works, get rid of the other stuff, okay? Build your pitching philosophy along the way. So one day, when I reach out to you and say, hey, you wanna get on some YouTube videos, you got some cool stuff to talk about. Like my man, I appreciate you, Craig, coming out and talking, sharing all these tips. We shot a bunch of videos, I'll leave all those links down below. Uh, if you wanna get in touch with Craig, he's in the Asheville, North Carolina area. I'll leave all his information down below. Hit him up if you wanna do some training, or he might be playing somewhere else. So he's still playing, still pro pitcher. So just hit him up. Uh, his contact info is down there. Check out his watch straps, all the links down in the description. Hop in the comment section. Let us know what you're doing. Are you long tossing? Are you a guy who likes to stay 150, 180? What are you doing? What's your goal? How fast are you throwing? Let us know in the comments below. If you have any questions, we also be happy to answer them down there. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.